This is gonna be a good day. What is going on everyone? My name is Joe and this is Different Take. Let me know down in the comments below where you rank the Nightmare movies. The Nightmare franchise is a unique franchise. Freddy's movies are not just slasher movies, they're psychological horror movies as well. This has been one of the hardest franchises I've ever had to rank. These movies are all so different and they all have pros and cons and I just, I had no idea what to do with it. This is not the Nightmare ranking, it's just my Nightmare ranking. Feel free to give your opinion on the Nightmare franchise down below in the comments but just don't be a prick about it to me or anyone else, okay? All right, you on the same page? Okay, all right, here we go. Enough of me yapping, let's get to it. This is my ranking of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, and here we go. Freddy's Dead, the final nightmare. It's not like I feel like this movie is the worst nightmare movie, Nah, that is. It's like the producers and everybody in the creative room were like, whatever the kids are doing these days, Freddy needs to do it. What are the kids doing these days? Nintendo? No, I'm playing with power. Ah, there you go. He plays Nintendo. Great graphics. They just went too far with it. And we got a completely goofy, over-the-top Looney Tunes comedy. <laughs> I mean, Freddy is gone. He's a joke now. And even the makeup and the voice are cartoonish. Sounds like a Sesame Street character or a Muppet. I'll give you my pretty and your little soul. Whose decision was this? It's traveling time. Who says that? What does that even mean? The dream people, the ones that gave me this job. When did this malarkey happen? <laughs> oh my God. The 3D glasses. Hmm. So Freddy's not scary. The nightmares aren't scary. It's not really all that funny. And the plot is muddled. So it's not much fun or really interesting to watch. Not to mention the abrupt ending where Freddy dies like he does in every other movie. Freddy's dead. Freddy's dead. That's it. That That's it. That's what you're going to end up. Like the credits are going to start right now. It really? This is what? Wow. Freddy's dead is a, yeah. Okay, all right, next one. Nightmare 5, The Dream Child. This is a weird movie. This movie has a darker tone, which is a good thing. There's not as much MTV-ness to it, but you gotta execute. And this movie did not execute. Even though the tone is darker in this movie, yet Freddy somehow, some way, is goofier. Dream Child commits the same mistake as Dream Master. It kills off an established, well-liked character in the first act. I don't know why these movies did this. I have no idea why. I think this is their way of saying like, oh, the stakes are high. This is getting serious now. You're gonna lose somebody you like. No, you movie, I wanna I, keep them in the movie longer. Don't kill them off so fast. How about that? And the editing is brutal. Bye, me on my own now. Fabulous. <laughs> Maybe I should spell it out for you. What the hell happened there? What the hell was with the creepy dad? He just sort of just pops into the frame. Hi, you kids. Just stopping by to say hello. Hope you enjoy your movie. What the hell was that about? Why did they leave that in? And you got baby Freddy. Kid Freddy. Teach me. What the fuck movie? You got Alice. You have Dan. Kid from Jurassic Park. I don't get it. Me neither, Dan. Me neither. And the kid scene seems so out of place. The movie comes to a complete screeching halt. Oh, hello. <laughs> what the hell? Get the f out of my movie. What the hell is going on? I must be released from my earthly prison. Thank you. What the hell is going on here? Too many subplots going on. Just keep it simple. The gothic aesthetic was cool. The MC Escher labyrinth bit at the end was pretty cool. Mark's comic book scene was a cool visual. Aha, I see what you did there, movie. The problem is that it went too goofy with it. Look, I appreciate that Dream Child tried to take it in a more serious direction with a darker tone, but you can't do that and have Freddy be goofy and have two different confusing subplots because not only is it not very interesting, but now no one is having fun either. And it doesn't really work. Nightmare 2, Freddy's Revenge. Freddy's Revenge makes no sense. Freddy's goal makes no sense. His powers make no sense. Even the title of the movie, Freddy's Revenge. Revenge on who? Nancy? She's not in this movie. Revenge on the parents that killed him? Nope. They ain't in this movie either. Nothing makes sense. Oh God, stop. Who wrote this stuff? That scene is just 
flat out goofy. And then you got the goofy ass scene with the dogs wearing the goofy ass mask. Ooh, <laughs> the hell thought of that. And you got the ending, which was just. I love you, Jesse. <laughs> the power of love defeating Freddy. Wait, what? What? No, no, no. That is an 80s ending and a half for your ass right there. There is a intriguing subtext about repressed sexuality. Yes, There is a documentary called Scream Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street. It goes into everything way better than I ever could. The acting was good and the characters were good in this movie. Mark Patton did a good job as Jesse. I really like Grady and the friendship between Grady and Jesse. Hey, you want to go out and go to a movie or something, hang out? Maybe do these things off your mind, get a picture or something? I don't know why you're wasting the time with this guy. You bastard crazy. Shut up, Grady. Want to shut up? Fine, I'll set up, no problem. I like Lisa and Jesse. There's some really great practical effects in this movie with some really cool scenes. And then you have the pool scene, but the pool scene completely lost me when Freddy just walks off like he's in like Field of Dreams. What the hell just happened? I like how dark Freddy is in this movie. But then you see stuff like Freddy reacting to Lisa. It's supposed to be like Jesse inside. Kill me, Lisa. Wait, what? This makes it seem silly. I like my protagonist to fight back. Jesse doesn't really put up too much of a fight. If anything, Lisa puts more of a fight up against Freddy than Jesse does. I am not afraid of you. And the fact that Jesse is becoming Freddy, it just makes it hard to root for anyone because our main protagonist is now the antagonist. I do like Freddy's revenge. It has some interesting ideas, it has some interesting subtext, but the execution just wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Nightmare for the Dream Master. This movie is a lot of fun, but it is a confusing hot mess. This is when you get the full MTV pop culture Freddy. He actually looks scary as hell in this one, and his voice is dark, yet somehow they still made him funny. They recast Chris's character with Tuesday Night, and they don't even really do a good job of sort of introducing us to Tuesday Night as Kristen. And you're going, who the hell is this? Who is this? And where is she? And what's happening? Not to mention that she has a completely different delivery of her lines. I'm telling you, he's coming back. Oh, is he? Is he coming back? I'm telling you, he's coming back. Since you say it like that, he's coming back. Yeah, I believe you now. We got more of Kristen's mom. Yay, Andale is back. Andale! 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 These are some of the best characters from one of the best nightmare movies. And you kill them off in the first act. Then you replace them with these new characters. And they have no depth and they're just introduced midway through, and they're acting like they all know each other. We have no idea who these people are. The new crew looks like Tears for Fears, and Dan looks so out of place. Why does Rick run like that? What the hell? Alice, I'm so sorry, it was a mistake. <laughs> what? Who wrote, that? who wrote that scene like that? You'll leave my power. What the hell is going on here? She could just give her powers to other people? What is this? Like an episode of Power Rangers. What the hell is happening? You have Alice collecting her friends like they're fucking infinity stones. Fucking A. Fucking A. Cotton, Ethan A. Somehow Nancy, Nancy's dad, Kincaid, Joey, and Kristen were all somehow able to buy cemetery lots right next to each other. <laughs> what? It doesn't work like that movie. Why bring up the Dream Master rhyme earlier in the movie if you're not going to use it until the end of the movie? Sort of defeats the purpose, don't it? They defeated Freddy with a mirror in this movie. Explain yourself, movie. I like how Kincaid's dog is named Jason and also has a white face with black spots. Well done, movie. I do like the soundtrack in this movie. There's a lot of good songs. There's some really good practical effects with some of the nastiest stuff. There are some really cool visuals in this movie. I mean, it's a fun movie, but unfortunately, it just it commits too many sequel cardinal sins and it doesn't do enough to make up for it. Surprise! I Bet you weren't expecting this movie to be where it is. I even surprised myself. Nightmare on Elm Street 2010. Yes, I like this movie. It's underrated, at least I feel it's underrated. I know a lot of people hate this movie, and that's fine. Bullshit! How can it be bullshit to state a preference? I enjoy it. I enjoy it as a dark horror movie, a dark psychological horror movie. There's just something really creepy about Jackie Earl Haley's performance. Oh my God! You're Which is good. It's great. I'm not here to laugh. If I want to watch a movie that makes jokes, I'll watch a comedy. All right. 
I want to come here and watch a scary movie. Give me a scary movie. The whole micro naps thing is scary as hell. And that was new. And that was terrifying because Freddy would just pop up just in and out of consciousness. So with this dark, creepy Freddy and the jump scares, it just has this very uncomfortable nature to it. I hear people complain about the acting like, oh, they're sleepwalking. It feels like they're lifeless. Moody Rooney Mara. Look like she didn't even want to be there. What? Who was telling? What? Did I miss something? It's not supposed to look like she wants to be there. She's playing a traumatized teenager who has suppressed memories from a traumatic experience as a kid. Not to mention, she's being chased in her dreams, her nightmares, by the same person who abused her as a child. Who wants to be in that situation? This is the first movie where it's like, they look exhausted. That's what they're supposed to look like. That's exactly what they're supposed to act like. And the fact that Freddy was intentionally not killing Nancy, but planning to keep her awake, like long enough, just long enough to put her into a coma. So she would be in like in a permanent sleep. So he could do whatever he wants for as long as he wants. I want to wake up! That's terrifying. Look, all in all, is Nightmare 2010 a great movie? No. Are any of these movies that I ranked before them, are any of them great? No. Is it your nightmare movies from the 80s? No. But if we're just talking movies that I liked as far as like not just comfort food, but scary movies, movies that creep me the hell out, this sits higher than those. Is Nightmare 2010 a perfect movie? No. But is it a solid horror movie? Yes. And I'm tired of people saying it's not. <laughs> Freddy vs. Jason. Now we're getting into some fun stuff. Freddy vs. Jason is way better than it had any right being. I liked Freddy in this movie. He has a nice balance. He's scary and he has some nice one-liners. I love the fight scenes in this movie. They're so much damn fun. It felt like a half horror movie, half action movie. The characters and the dialogue was so over the top, but in the best way. It felt tongue in cheek. Gives me some assistance. <laughs> and self-aware. Somebody's definitely breaking the fucking reality rules. I really liked Mark and I liked Will and Mark's chemistry on screen. Actually, I really wish we would've got more of them. How many times do I have to tell you, man? I don't do checkers. I'm an Uno guy, all right? So go grab the fucking Uno deck and we'll play. Oh yeah, I remember Jason being a dog in Dream Master. It's time to put this bad dog to sleep. Nice callback movie. This movie was funny too. It took itself seriously, but not too serious. Dude, that goalie was pissed about something. It was just straight up entertaining. This movie is what they call big dumb fun. And that's exactly what it was. Big dumb fun. There was something about Dream Warriors, even as a kid, that really appealed to me. The fact that these characters can all fight back and use their dreams to their advantage, their nightmares to their advantage, and sort of you get their own powers through the dreams. That was a really cool concept, and I loved that concept. And you have a really good balance of Scary Freddy and One-Liner Freddy. And they really upped the practical effects. Everything was just up a notch. You have some great, memorable characters. They all have the same qualities to them, especially King Kate. Later, how much are you gonna keep throwing smoke up our ass? Evening sedation for everybody. The fuck you will? One of my favorite Nightmare characters of all time. Now sit down! Fuck you! You sit up! I just want more of King Kate, please. On delay is back. On delay. On delay. The character of Neil, I just, I don't, understand it just was unnecessary he's in the way a little bit i don't like the way that they treated john saxon's character i don't like the way that they had neil treat john saxon's character it's like what this is a major flaw in this movie for me at least i don't like the fact that nancy dies at the end <laughs> that no she went through all that in the first movie and just to die in this movie really come on man erroneous erroneous and then her dad dies too go f yourself things like this can get overlooked because of all the good things about it. This movie is so good, so much fun, and it's one of my favorite nightmare movies. I still have no idea where to put these next two movies. All my entire life, I have had Yoji Nightmare Movie as number one. I feel like I can't do it. I can't move that from number one, but you know what, it. let's do it. We're doing it live. The bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Number two is... Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. The OG Nightmare. Right now, at this point in time, technically number two. It's really like 1B. Pepper needs new shorts. Oh. 
First off, this movie is a classic. Let's just put it out there in the open. I watch it every year. I watch it multiple times a year. And I love this movie. It's scary. The concept is terrifying. As the movie goes on, you're actually more scared for these characters because you gotta sleep at some point. The problem is when you sleep in these movies, you're done. Wes Craven is a master of horror, just like John Carpenter. They build suspense. They show their monster slowly but surely. They show him in the corners, then they get closer and closer in act one, act two, act three. This movie is slower, it's more meticulously paced. There's just like this escalating danger through the movie. The score in this movie is, I think, underrated. It's creepy as hell. Heather Langenkamp as Nancy is one of my favorite final characters. The fact that Nancy fights back so much, I just, I love that aspect to her character. Booby traps and improvised anti-personnel devices. I'm into survival. You have some great practical effects and you have some really creepy imagery. Nancy's mom, everything's so overdramatic and like daytime Emmy kind of stuff, like soap opera stuff. It's just like almost distracting and sort of takes away from certain scenes. The biggest thing for me with this movie, even though I love it, is the ending. It really doesn't make much sense. One minute Nancy's in the room and the mom's on the bed and she goes down into like the underworld of the mattress world. She's like waving by, she's like, Bye, buddy, hope you find your dad. And then you have blue lights and smoke. I don't know what's happening. And then Freddy comes back and then he disappears into the ether. I don't know what's going on there. And then she opens the door and then she's outside of her house. I am confusion. Is it still supposed to be a nightmare? Is, it, is she still asleep? Kind of cheapens that end just a smidge for me. Just a smidge, because it's not real clear on what the hell is going on. The OG nightmare has always been number one. But there is a movie that has always been my number two. And it has always been one of my favorite movies. And it's finally starting to get the respect that it definitely deserves. And that movie is... Okay, what I love about Wes Craven's New Nightmare, it is such an intelligent, smart, meta story. This movie is firing on all cylinders. Wes Craven is firing on all cylinders. I mean, the creativity, the original concept of taking the original concept that he had, his creation, and expanding upon it to this meta real world story of like, with like demons involved, it's just a hell of an idea. It's really smart. It's scary, it's entertaining, it's well acted. You could watch it over and over and over again, pick up on all these different small details. This movie was also Scream before Scream. New Nightmare essentially walked so Scream could run. I mean, people were not ready for it yet. With this movie, he was able to sort of do the things that he wanted to do. It just sort of sneaks its way in there as like, yeah, I kind of want to redo that, but I'm not going to remake my movie. So I'll do a whole new story. It's kind of like a sequel. It's kind of meta. And it's kind of like a reboot, a soft reboot of my original movie with a better ending. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Holy shit. Freddy is dark in this movie. He's scary. I love the fact that Wes Craven was able to bring it back to its horror roots. Miss me. When Robert England pops out, Wes Craven's like, this is what you've made him. You've taken my creation and made it into this, but I'm gonna still make him scary. Why? Because I'm that damn good and he did it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be Freddy. Freddy is such a big pop culture icon, his presence is lingering. It's like her own personal demons are just haunting her. You can see how Heather Langenkamp is just jumpy. She's just uncomfortable a little bit. It's the presence of Freddy there, even though it's not really Freddy. Heather, thanks for having the guts to play Nancy one last time. At last, Freddy's back where he belongs. Regards. Wes. I love Heather Langenkamp as Nancy in this movie. It is by far her best performance. John Saxon's great in this movie. Miko Hughes is great in this movie. Julie is awesome. You bitch. But what's gonna happen to you when I stick you with it? And I will. It's so good. It's so well done. That's why Wes Craven's New Nightmare to me is my favorite because to me it is a more complete Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Front to back, beginning to end, and I think it's time that we all finally give Wes Craven's New Nightmare the respect that it deserves. So here's to you, Wes Craven's New Nightmare, and here's to Wes Craven for coming back all these years later, taking that concept, bringing it back, and just putting a whole new spin on it. Wes Craven, you genius you. Okay, that was my ranking of the Nightmare franchise. Did you like it? Did you have fun? Did we all have fun here? Okay, good. If you like my Nightmare ranking, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on social media for all channel updates in the in-between time. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Hey.